just sitting here thinking about my next project in keeping with my Egyptian theme, I want to build a pillar. And I'm going to use uh, foam and wood, paint of course, maybe some drywall compound. But I'm not sure how I want to do it yet. I actually kind of started the project last weekend, but I need to get down to actually building the column. Let me show you what I have. Here's the column that I've started on. Started on it last week. And I'm not sure exactly how I want to do it yet as far as the design, what I want it to look like. I know I want it to be a column and it's going to be as tall as this foam sheet here. But I'm not sure whether I want to make it like a, a rectangular column or like a rounded column. Of course, the rectangular column would be a lot easier than the rounded one. But I think the rounded one might look better. So that's what I'm kind of thinking, contemplating right now. But either way, I knew I needed to make a frame just to support this foam. So I took some lumber and I kind of pieced together some of my scraps and then I made a base. So this actually can move around. So in theory, if I didn't want my column here, I could move it someplace else. The column itself will serve as more decoration for the Egyptian tomb, but also it will kind of hide what I want to put behind here to kind of break up the room a little bit and make a little more uh, interesting, maybe a little more unknown when you walk into the tomb here because you don't know what's behind the column. But as you can see, I'm using this one inch foam that I bought several months ago. I bought about seven sheets of it. So I still have a lot left over. But how I plan on constructing this is I'm going to use this big piece here as the back and then I will nail and glue kind of like what I have here. And I'll just use some like liquid nails and maybe some screws in here to hold all this foam together. And then I'll take my foam and kind of build it out. And then this will just be like one solid piece with this board, this laminated board here in the center that will make it rigid and I'll be able to move this column around wherever I want to put it. Cutting this rigid foam is not hard at all. The most important thing to remember, or the three most important things to remember, are these. One, make sure you use a sharp knife. Number two, use a straight edge if you want to make a straight line. If you don't, then don't worry about it. Three, be extremely careful. You can cut yourself really bad. Well, as you can see, I decided to layer the foam together with some liquid nails. My foam column is starting to look like a column. As you can see, instead of making just a rectangular column out of like a few sheets of foam, I went ahead and decided to layer a bunch of foam together. And this is what I have. And I use various size sheets of foam. A lot, a lot of it was scrap. And just kind of put it all together, one layer at a time, using some liquid nails. And this is what it looks like. 
This is a side view. So the next step is to shape it into the column that I want. Now, I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but I went ahead and made two lines. They're in red, starting from the bottom to the top, one on each side, and they start wide at the bottom and go inward towards the top. And that's roughly the shape of the column that I want. So the plan is to take this little saw blade, and this is a hacksaw saw blade, and I'll just cut, saw through that red line and cut all this extra foam off on each side. That'll get rid of a lot of it. And then I'll go back with some sandpaper, a file, and I'll shave it, shape it so that it's rounded to get the look that I'm looking for. And that's gonna be a messy step. So I think what I'll do is, when I start shaping it, sanding it down, I'll get my shop back out and I'll turn that on and while I'm sanding it and filing it down and creating all those little foam particles, I'll just suck that stuff up while I'm doing it. So that's my next step. I think this will work better. I've got my column all shaped. It was actually rather easy. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more messier and take longer than what it actually did. So what I did, as you saw in the video, I went outside and I took my saw and that little saw, little hacksaw blade that I was gonna use just didn't work. So I got my big saw out and I cut off all the extra foam. That probably took me 15 minutes and then I went about shaping the column and that went super fast. I ended up using my sander with this little catch bag on here. So as I sanded, all that foam went into this little bag right here. And all I had to do was empty this out every once in a while. And I ended up using like an 80 grit sandpaper. And I took that on there and went zoop, 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 zoop. And it went fast. I bet I spent maybe 15 minutes on that. So all total, I bet I only spent like about 35 minutes cutting the foam and shaping it with this sander. And I'm done shaping it. I think it looks fine. So the next step is to, I'm gonna paint this. I've got some old paint that I've been using here in the studio. It's like a beige brown color. So I'll put a coat of paint on that and then I will probably fasten it to this back board here. I'll slip this over that tube here, this long support stick, glue it to this backboard, and then I'll do my final decorating on it. Now, I still have to do uh, the top of it, the capital. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that yet. But also, as you can tell, I went ahead and painted this back piece of foam yellow to match the other walls inside the studio here. I still have to do the back side of the wall. So let me do some more stuff to this column here as far as painting it. I'll fasten it to the back wall here and then I'll show you what I have. I've got two projects going on out here this morning. I've got the column and I'm making a new sign for the studio. So be sure to check that one out also. I've got the column painted, at least the first coat. I think I'm ready to go ahead and attach this column to this board. Now, I had to make a few modifications. Not to necessarily the the way I wanted to attach it to 
the, the board here, but I added one too many layers of foam to the back here. I should have never put this back piece of foam on. I should have waited because this back piece of foam was actually supposed to be this big sheet. So what I did was I had to cut this section out because this was like this, one solid piece. So I cut this channel off, removed the piece like this, took the extra foam that I cut out, stuck it back in this slot and glued it. So now this will fit over this nicely and this back piece here will lay flat against here. Now I also had to take this two by four that I have on the bottom there and replace it or move it to the back. It was in the front here. I had to take it off and put it in the back because now this will slide in here like that and this channel will fit over here and then this piece here will lay flat there. So that's the next step now is to put this column and this piece of foam all together on this support here, this post. I think what I'll do is I'll attach some screws or tape and sandwich this together so this connects to the glue and holds it while it dries. <laughs> I had to take that 2x4 off again and reattach it closer to the column. This is the back of the column that I've been working on. I went ahead and painted it yellow to match the wall murals that I did here in the studio because you will be able to see the top portion of this when it's in the corner right here. When you're standing like where I'm at and you're looking behind me, you'll be able to see the back of it. Now, because of that, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the technique that I used over in the corner back there and make this look like some old stone where the plaster is coming off, just to kind of dress it up some. Let me uh, do a closer look here on that back corner so you can see what I'm talking about. This is what I want to do on the back of the column, the part that you'll see from behind. I want to make some old stone. I want it to look like the plaster is falling off the stone and you can see some of the stone coming through. Now, if you're interested in how I did this or how I'm going to do it, I'll leave a link in the video below in the description. But basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some painter's tape and make some grid lines where I want the stone to be and then take some joint compound and spread it all over it and then peel the tape off and then paint it. That's it. Well, as you can see, I've been hard at work. This is the front of the column. I went ahead and put a second coat of paint on the column itself, and I fastened everything together. Up here for the capital, this is just more a leftover foam that I had, and all I did was simply put like a 45 cut 
on the ends and then I put some glue on the back of the foam and glued this to the top and then used my nailer and shot some nails into the foam just to kind of hold it there while the glue dried. So now what I need to do is paint this and I think what I'll do is I'll probably put some color up here like maybe some blue, some red, some greens, maybe make it look like it's faded like maybe the paint has come off of it. And then down in here, I think I'm going to highlight some of these cracks to make it look like crevices in the stone. But I'm pretty happy with it so far. I think it'll look nice in the corner there. The column is done. It's over there in the corner. Let me show you what it looks like. The column is actually two-sided. I have the front, which is the column, and then on the back, I did that faux brickwork like I did back here in the corner. So depending on which side you're looking at, there's decorations on each side. Let's take a closer look. This is the back side. I like the way it turned out. And again, this will be in the corner against the workbench over there. So you won't see that when you first come in. It'll be like behind the column. Let me flip it around and show you what the column itself looks like. And there's the column. I think the column turned out really well. Pretty happy with it. I went ahead and also added some plaster on the yellow foam here just to make it look like, well, not plaster, it was uh, the drywall compound, but I wanted to make it look like plaster, like it was old plaster and the paint was falling off. And then I took and added some brown to the column there. I wanted it to look like stone that's been kind of stacked on top of each other to make the column. And I was really surprised that it really didn't take too long to do it. Even though I've been working on it for over a month, well, at least it's been sitting here for over a month. I probably only have maybe, I don't know, five, six hours on it, if that. I just didn't do it all at one time. It kind of sat there and I, Every once in a while I'd work on it and I'd decide, oh, I need to work on it again. But it's finally done as far as adding anything major to it. Now, once I have it in place and I do my final decorating out here, I'll probably add some more stuff to it. It's one of those deals that when you set things up, you take a look at it and you think, wow, I think it needs this, it needs that. So I might add a few more things to it, but... Overall, I'm very happy with it. Let me go ahead and stick it over here in the corner and I'll uh, show you what it's going to look like when it's kind of set up. So this is where it's going to be when I set it up for the, the final setup here, when I do my little haunt here in the studio. And basically I wanted it so that when you walk through this door, you really can't see what's behind here. So I have this column here. Now, let me flip the camera around and I'll show you what the back side looks like. So this is the back side. I know it's a weird angle, but it is what it is. But on the back side here, I'm going to have my uh, Egyptian sarcophagus laid on the counter here. And I might put one of those uh, torches up here. Let me show you. Maybe one of my uh, wall torches that I made, like here or 
back here someplace. Not sure. We'll figure that out when we do our final decorating. Heck, I might even uh, put it on the other side. I think that's going to wrap this video up. Don't be afraid to try something like this. It was actually rather easy. It can be a little expensive using the foam, but maybe you can make it out of something else. My original thought was I was going to use those uh, concrete tubes, the cardboard tubes that you pour concrete into to make forms, like round forms. I thought about that, but then I had all this foam that I'd bought, so I decided to make the column out of foam. But you can even use cardboard boxes. Anything you have on hand, I think would work. I'm not sure where I'm gonna store this at when this is over, but we'll worry about that later, I guess. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like this type of content, consider subscribing to the channel. I've got lots more of Egyptian props that I'll be making for this year's haunt. So if you found it neat, interesting, be sure to check my channel out and come back again. Talk to you later. Bye.